Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Canal Plus. It's such a pleasure, real pleasure, to be with you today again in a movie theater. If someone had told me, for, first of all, Thierry and Pierre, thanks for being with us. If we'd been told that we would have spent a two and a half months without going to a cinema, that would have been mind-boggling. So it's a real pleasure to be at the UGC Normandy Theater here in Paris. How does it feel to be in a movie theater again? Well, it's... It's very enjoyable for all movie aficionados because we've never been through such a thing ever since we were young children and since we had the board meeting of the festival this morning. Uh, we've exchanged texts and uh, uh, people ask me, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to the theatre. Wow. And it is here that we are announcing the selection and so uh, you can, uh, we're happy to come back. But of course, normally it's every year in a movie theatre theatre that we announced the selection and so once again we're delighted to be uh, hosted here by the UGC uh, theatre and uh, we'd like to pay tribute to all movie uh, theatre directors around the, around the world. That's a great shot, a wonderful shot, a historic theatre. But theatres are going to reopen on 22 June and Canal Plus will support the reopening of theatres more than ever. We'll talk about the Cannes Film Festival. Well, uh, Canal Plus has been a historical supporter of the festival and you know that all types of movies are important for Canal Plus. Uh, the selection of the festival is always very eclectic. We'll come back. It's usually announced in April. It's the 3rd June today. There has been COVID-19, but you never gave up. You always had to struggle to make this festival exist in 2020. Well, the thing is, we had as many as 2,067 uh, uh, nominees, I mean, at least uh, people sent us all these uh, movies and it was for us to s go through all these movies, see them all, and together with Pierre Lescure and the board of directors and, of course, with the professionals of, of the industry, we got together and, of course, uh, it is uh, for Cannes to play its, uh, its usual role in May. Well, this time the city of Cannes was closed down and we couldn't say just goodbye. And yes, this this edition of the festival starting here on stage where you've brought us together and ending at the end of the Oscars and the César and Thierry always says that it's like a it's like a cattle auction where you count things. You can see what's happened year-round. So we knew it wasn't just about this fortnight that we missed, of course, but not just about this fortnight. Thierry was in uh, the centre of France in Lyon, and we were on the phone twice a day, and we never once thought that, well, the ceremony, as we know it, the fortnight won't happen, but the rest will happen. The festival in its year-round edition will continue. Hence the creation of a 73rd edition Count 2020 label. Yes, well, of course, uh, what we're announcing is the official selection. <laughs> and I'm impatient too, I don't know what it's about. Well, the thing is, uh, every movie uh, that uh, comes out will, of course, have the, uh, the logo of the 73rd edition of the festival, but of course, uh, this is the official 2020 selection. Every year, they have 50 or 60 movies, and this year again, there will be 50 to 60 movies, and you can go through the list. Well, we're impatient and uh, another good piece of news, the only good news today, the re-election as president of the festival of Pierre Lescure. Congratulations, dear Pierre. Good news that you're very excited about. Yes, I'm all the more excited as it's very symbolic, this uh, suspended moments that are going to end with the easing of lockdown, but the re-election of president, so it's my third term. I don't know whether I'll serve the whole term because I've had an old idea Idea that we've talked about extensively with the CNC and the Ministry of Culture and Thierry. I would like to further a transition. We are not used to uh, someone who stays on for so long. I'd like to establish something cooler, and quieter. So we've got a lot of things that we're working on, but we'll work on it very quietly and preparing for the succession in the future of uh, the 200 years of cinema. So Thierry, together, will discuss of the official selection, so we agree these are the films that should have been presented in April. Well, yes, uh, except for those uh, that, uh, because of uh, the, uh, the situation, so a few movies, because they were not uh, quite ready to, uh, to go, uh, we decided to have them in 2021 instead. But of course, uh, some... Uh, 
uh, uh, observers might say, well, how come some uh, movies didn't make it this Donc, time? On, on well, they'll 2020, make it next time. <laughs> so uh, while we're preparing this year, we're actually uh, also looking uh, at movies that will be shown uh, next year instead. And some movies May, that were not uh, ready uh, in, in May, but uh, they, 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 uh, they, uh, they will be uh, ready uh, for, for the fall, and they were shown to us. And um, by and large, people were very happy to see that we didn't give up on the uh, festival altogether. Uh, there were fine uh, papers, in, I remember, in, in the New York Times. I mean, uh, when what we uh, lost at Cannes, uh, we can make up for elsewhere. And we were very much touched by signs of affection. <laughs> and, and so, <laughs> by the way, we decided to uh, pull off next year's <laughs> festival <laughs> to <laughs> receive the same compliments because we get more compliments when we cancel than when we hold the festival. Well, maybe it's easier in a way. So can we discover the selection? Yes, of course, very much so. Very much so. So... Now, you have a list of about 50 movies. Now, it's not uh, structured the uh, usual way with the opening uh, uh, and the closing movie and that sort of thing, uh, because uh, we didn't want to sort of a, a second rain, a second rate uh, festival because it cannot be the real thing. Uh, we decided to uh, well, we'll be showing the movies, of course, and they will be uh, shown in uh, festivals after this. But uh, the list I'm about to uh, reveal is uh, still structured, and I would like to start with the the faithful, that, that is, uh, those uh, that are uh, people that we were used to having uh, at Cannes. Well, you get used to them. Well, great uh, filmmakers, uh, and I'm delighted to uh, have this year. I mean, in our mind, we, I mean, we we are uh, receiving them. Wes uh, Anderson with the the French Dispatch. Uh, I mean, uh, it was, um, well, there was Benicio del Toro, uh, Léa Seydoux, uh, I mean, a remarkable uh, uh, cast, and uh, that is a unique uh, movie. I mean, it's halfway between the, a sort of a comic strip and uh, well, uh, animation uh, uh, film, and then uh, a very highly uh, visual movie. Uh, it's a, ba a big tribute to journalism. Um, the second a movie Ete by François Ozon, Été 85, the summer of 85. Now, that's a sort of a Michel windfall Sergent, situation. Michel Sergent, who is the, the distributor, uh, uh, called me and said, uh, you know what, you will be announcing the movie? Well, it will come out. And so uh, the movie will be out in theaters on the 15th of July, uh, when the movie theaters reopen. Uh, of course, uh, for movie theaters to open, you need to have movies uh, to show. And that was a very personal movie by François Ozon. And on the 14th of July, on the Champs-Élysées, you can come to the UGC Normandy Theatre and watch Ozone's film. Then True Mother, uh, that's, uh, I mean, it's a Japanese movie with an English title by Naomi Kawase. She was on the jury. We know her quite well. It's a very moving movie on adoption. And then there are two movies uh, with one film director. One, I mean, uh, some a director whom we like very much, Steve McQueen, which we discovered with Hunger, had a remarkable career from Hollywood to uh, visual art. And so he got the Camerador for the first movie at Hunger, and he said he wanted to run the, the official uh, competition. And we told him uh, when he uh, left... The Of years a slave, you may remember as a slave, uh, but he, at the Oscars, but now he's in Cannes with two movies produced by uh, the BBC, uh, Lovers Rock and Mangrove, uh, um, period movies. As a member of the selection committee said, uh, we will sort of uh, increase uh, <laughs> diversity because uh, this is uh, 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 the black community in the London of the 1970s and Mangrove is about uh, 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 police officers uh, on trial because uh, they are harassing the black community and of course this is very topical today. And then Thomas uh, Winterberg, his movie is called Drug. It sounds like drug and it's almost the same thing because it's a movie about that. It's uh, the uh, midlife crisis with uh, Matt Middleson, Middleson who decided to uh, get drunk uh, and uh, on, the, on the bench to think about the passing of time. Then 
last words by Jonathan Nosseter, that's an American movie. He, uh, uh, back in 2004, he had an appearance in Cannes, and now he has a fiction movie, so he's American. With the, and then he became Italian and, and made documentary movies, and this is a fiction about uh, the end of the world. You might think that it was written uh, last week and uh, edited in a couple of weeks. It will very much resonate with the very uh, peculiar times we are experiencing. I hope this won't happen again, but I uh, hope it will not lead to the end of the world with climate change. And then the next movie that will be uh, running for France, for well, France and Algeria, by Mai Wen. She was twice in official competition and she got quite, uh, uh, she won awards on both times and part of her DNA is Algeria and the movie is called DNA in French, ADN. It's a fiction movie. She uh, uh, stars in it herself and it's back to her roots. It's a very touching movie. Then In Sang So that made a movie about the color of money has a movie called Heaven In Sang So. It's, uh, it's sort of a chums movie, but you have uh, cops, you have uh, nurses. It's, a, uh, it's an epic uh, with all sorts of uh, different episodes. It's, it's quite a remarkable movie. Uh, heaven uh, said there would be comedies. It could be seen as a comedy. Uh, Fernand, uh, Trueba, Fernando Trueba has a movie called uh, El Ovidio que Seremos. Uh, it's, uh, it takes place in Colombia, and Trueba got a name for himself. He got an Oscar. Uh, called a Belle Époque, and he said, I don't believe in God, and I will not thank God, but I do believe in Billy Wilder, and I would like to thank Billy Wilder. Then Luca Belvo, a Belgian filmmaker, very much almost a Parisian, Des hommes, uh, men, well, who are these men, men of a certain generation, that of Gérard Depardieu, who is in the movie, who uh, were on the uh, in the Algerian war, uh, and they came back uh, changed. And that is a movie about the center of France, and, uh, a sort of a, uh, uh, provincial France. And then uh, Sang Ho Yeon, a peninsula. It's a Korean movie. I mean, uh, uh, peninsula is uh, the one. The, f the sequel to uh, Last Train to Busan uh, was sort of a zombie movie, How to Live with Zombies, zombies and it's a very scary uh, movie. So that's, these are uh, people who've, whom we've seen before in Cannes, and they were working on projects, and they showed us their movie, and they accepted. By the way, it's quite touching to see. I mean, this is a sort of virtual official selection. It will be played out differently in different uh, places, but it was not... It will not be can as we knew it. And then we have newcomers, people or people who came once, like such as Koji Fukada, the uh, Japanese who had a movie on Certain uh, Regards. Now he has a new movie called um, uh, The Real Thing. Uh, that's a long movie, almost five hours. Uh, but uh, when people go through the <laughs> list of films, oh my God, that's a three-hour three hour movie. Am I going to sit through all this? I mean, no, this time, nobody said anything about that. But by and large, the movies there, except for this one, is quite, uh, are quite short. Then Daniel Arbid is a Lebanese uh, filmmaker. She uh, had this movie based on a book called Passion Simple, Simple Passion. Um, then there's a French Mention movie by Marie Castille, Mention Charles, a movie is called A Good Man, and that kind of film might, you might think, well, is that movie for the Cannes Festival? Well, we think it very much is. It's directed at the general public. I will not reveal uh, the story, uh, uh, but um, it is a, uh, a, a societal movie. Then a movie called Les Choses Qu'on Dit, Les Choses Qu'on Fait by Emmanuel Mouret, with starring Vincent McCain and the things that we do, the things that we say. Uh, and uh, you have uh, you have uh, some you have Billy Schneider who played a lot, uh, but Vincent McCain was uh, in this movie and many others. Then uh, striding into the wind. This is a Chinese movie by Wei Shu Jun. That's a movie about Chinese youth, and uh, this has become a genre in itself. 
uh, because uh, uh, China has Pasquale provided Sisto lots of movies. Then we have Pasquale Sisto. He's American. He uh, is an artist from uh, well, the contemporary uh, scene, and he's made this movie. Uh, Uh, it's a highly visual uh, movie. Uh, the screenplay is uh, by uh, uh, Nicolas, uh, Nicolas, who wrote for uh, uh, Inaritu, and his movie is uh, uh, called John and the Hold, or Pasquale Sisto. And then you have an Egyptian movie about Egyptian youth, youth called Suwad by um, Aten Amin. So we have lots of, I mean, of course, there's uh, uh, political developments, military developments in, in in Egypt, uh, and so là, we sort of uh, often take a, a step back, but uh, in uh, this uh, film, you go inside the houses, you, you, it's the, the way people live. I mean, here you have a young woman, this uh, woman called Sua, the way in which they live, uh, social uh, media, text messages, ben that Charoc, sort of thing. Then uh, Ben uh, Sharrock is an English uh, Englishman. His movie, a bit reminiscent of Wes Anderson, uh, his movie is called uh, Limbo, taking place in northern England. It's a story about... Um, undocumented aliens arriving uh, in a small uh, harbor somewhere and, are, and, and quite bored. Then Here We Are by Nia Bergman, an Israeli uh, uh, filmmaker. Israel also is a great uh, film uh, uh, nation, as it were. They produce lots of movies there, and we're looking forward to that production. Then Rouge by Farid Bentoumi. He made a movie called Viva Algeria. So this is starring uh, Farid Benjina uh, as well. Rouge, red, is not the, the color of the flag, but the color of mud uh, or slurry coming out of a, a factory. And uh, we have a, a labor unionist working in that plant. Uh, the daughter is hired in that uh, plant. She's a sort of Ellen Brockovich. I mean, she puts her nose in the sort of this uh, uh, sort of thing because she works for occupational medicine. Then Sweat by uh, Magnus von Horn from uh, Northern Europe, from Sweden. So there's a great diversity of geographical provenances here, movies from all over over the place, and uh, we really broke records. Also, in terms of first movies, uh, there's a movie called Teddy by Ludovic and Zoran Bukherma. So that's the second movie uh, uh, starring Anthony Mazon, who uh, had a lot of movies uh, this year. He had a prize in Berlin. Um, for the movie called The Prayer. Cedric Kahn. Cedric Kahn, indeed. La Prière, the prayer by Cedric Kahn. So this is not a zombie movie, but it's about, it's about werewolves. So these are auteur movies, sort of the art house movies, you might think, but uh, they lead uh, the, uh, the genre uh, film industry. Uh, from, uh, well, you may remember Emmanuel Shish, who uh, uh, distributed Parasite, among others. Then um, we uh, have uh, a movie by Kamen Kalev. This movie is from Bulgaria. His movie is called February, Février. Then Francis Lee has a movie, an English movie this time. Uh, it's a bit like uh, the French movie Portrait of a Young Woman on Fire, about uh, what was it like to be a homosexual in different uh, periods of time. And this is uh, uh, women, homose uh, homosexuals. Uh, this movie is called uh, Ammonite, starring Kate Winston. We uh, have seen very little of her at the Cannes Film Festival. I mentioned uh, Vincent McCain. There's Mid Saint Denis by Elie Vajman. It's like a French bad lieutenant in the medical community, medical workers. So this uh, is a Paris by night, but not the sort of Paris by night you might have, uh, you might know. Uh, it's a different sort of un. Uh, uh, sort of behind behind the scenes uh, uh, Paris by Night Oscar with Roller, Sarah Giraudot. Then uh, Enfant Roller, Terrible um, by uh, Oscar Roller. This is a German filmmaker and this is, uh, I mean, they, in Germany they make lots of movies. We don't see them all, um, but here the bad boy, the Enfant Terrible is none other than Fassbender. Uh, uh, I mean, you may remember that uh, uh, Fassbinder died young before the age of uh, 40, and he he actually made uh, 40 movies, 25 plays, uh, and uh, that movie is theatrical. It tells the story of Aina Werner Fassbinder, the filmmaker, uh, who was also a, uh, an alcohol, alcoholic. And then uh, by Pascal Plant, there's a movie called Nadia Butterfly, called Nadia Butterfly, the day after. 
stuff. Uh, you have that's two sporting uh, movies. You have this uh, athletes who's uh, won the competition, and then what happens next? And this movie was directed by a man, but we live with this woman uh, from beginning to end, and uh, it is quite quite remarkable. And then to complete on the newcomers, there's a. Um, a uh, skits movies uh, by Johnny To from Hong Kong, and we would like to uh, tip our hats to the people of Hong Kong. By the way, they uh, received us uh, very warmly uh, in Cannes. There was a, a, a November last year, uh, a, um, we were received. And Johnny To uh, is uh, a fan of uh, French wine. Anyway, um, he, uh, he has Johnny To, we have Anne Wee, uh, Tony Hark, uh, San Samino Hung and uh, Win Wong Ping and Patrick Tam <laughs> about uh, Hong Kong. So you have uh, uh, a skits, short skits about Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is very much in the news nowadays. So we have lots of uh, first uh, movies this year. Uh, we saw a lot, but because uh, some movies only made it to the, well, the next year's selection, we felt that uh, you have movies for the general public. Uh, we have a number of first movies and very very often, you have uh, famous people who never made films before, or you have, oh, you have famous actors. There's one who was in Sean Penn's first movie, uh, and uh, we saw him, uh, Viggo Mortensen. Now he's going behind the camera called a movie called Falling. Viggo is a photographer and poet, a publisher. He's got a big life, apart from being a, a, super sad, a superstar, and this is a very personal movie. And uh, the, when actors and actresses go behind the camera, there's a good reason for it. This movie was shot, shown at the Sundance uh, Film Festival as the closing uh, movie. Uh, we had exchanges with other film festivals uh, to get movies going, and some of these movies will be shown at the next uh, Sundance uh, Festival. Uh, Ninja Tinberg she is a Swedish filmmaker. That's her first movie. The movie is called Pleasure. A funny story. Story of a, of a Swedish young woman going to Los Angeles. She wants to become a superstar and became a superstar but in the uh, porn uh, film industry. And so you, you see this sort of uh, uh, desire to be seen on social media. Uh, it's a very contemporary, very uh, sort of unsettling movie, uh, but a very Powerful movie. As uh, Charlene Favier's movie is called Slalom. Slalom is about, uh, uh, of course, about skiing. Uh, she lives in the mountains, and that's her first movie about. The, uh, the, uh, the way in which a coach uh, can uh, sort of take over and have uh, uh, sort of a, a sexual power over long athletes, female athletes, and this movie is about that. Um, and it's starting with uh, Jeremy. Uh, the uh, main role and many actors then Casa de Antibois uh, by Chao Miranda a Brazilian movie and Brazil, Brazil uh, is uh, going through difficult times uh, Walter Sellers tell us that we really have to help Brazil uh, the film archive the National Film Archive in Brazil is experiencing difficulties so that's uh, the first movie Miranda uh, was actually mentioned in, uh, in a short film selection a few years back in Can. Jimmy Carew, uh, this is a Lebanese filmmaker, Broken Keys, Broken Keys is the name of the movie. Um, now, uh, you have keys uh, or... Uh, for keyholes, but also for on musical staffs uh, uh, in the Middle East uh, with the Daesh and, and the Islamic State, uh, you can see uh, what is uh, the role of music. You might find it uh, interesting, the, 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 the narrative takes us uh, on this journey and uh, shows us what is going on there. Ibrahim by uh, Sargon Esmi, he's a, an actor, but that's his first movie about the father and son situation. Um, the uh, 
The Death of Cinema. So this halfway between uh, creation and, and fiction uh, by Denis Rosenberg, then Naked Sky by Kum uh, Balach Rini, a Georgian filmmaker, a very personal movie, um, very powerful film, Gagarin by Familiata and Jeremy Trouille, that's a French movie, Gagarin, of course, uh, well, it's not the, well, you have the space explorer, but uh, it's the name of a, an urban ghetto, uh, something that was built and we were felt, well, that it was not really conducive for a happy life. Eventually, the buildings were torn down. This is a movie about youth in these urban uh, ghettos. Then, 16 printemps, 16 years, uh, by Suzanne Brindon. Uh, it's a movie about uh, young women. Uh, that movie is a very personal movie again. It was shot not far from here, here in Paris. And uh, there was mention of this earlier on. Uh, you may remember uh, last year we had La Gilles about with Les Miserables, uh, and uh, uh, well, this is another uh, take at uh, French youth. Vaurien, uh, Hoodlums by uh, Peter Deroulbis, uh, um, and uh, of course, uh, you have a movie that, uh, well, you have terrible things being unveiled. The director worked 10 years uh, in social services, so this is about well, life on the streets. Then Nicolas uh, Maury directed his first movie called Garçon Chiffre. Uh, here we have uh, an actor whom we saw very much on TV uh, series. And Si le vent tombe, uh, Nora Martironson, uh, she's an Armenian filmmaker living in Paris. Uh, and this is about the uh, reopening of the closed. Uh, airport uh, about uh, sort of the, the desert of the Tartars, uh, but this time about airports. Uh, and here we have an actor whom we hadn't seen in many years. Uh, this is a movie about emptiness, uh, waiting endlessly with the sort of landscapes we don't often see uh, in, uh, in movies. So these are quite remarkable movies, and uh, we do believe that these uh, uh, films Makers will see again. Laurent, yes, well, uh, you, Canal, because uh, since it's quieter uh, uh, here at Canal than when uh, we are selecting the movies two weeks before the festival, it's the sort of enjoyable quietness where you explain how out of 2,000 movies received by your committee, you called it to 50-odd films, and you explain that. It's almost like lace points, and uh, yeah, it's exciting. Well, yeah, well, that's about a, an airport where, in, uh, we're waiting for things to happen. Even though, but a bit, like literature, I mean, like if you, have a, you, know, you go to a bookstore to buy a book, I mean, you should just uh, go to the bookstores and you read a book and say, well, this is literature, and, and this movie by Nora Marti uh, about airports uh, will be shown also by Acid. Acid is also a selection, a, a small competition in Cannes, and we work with them, and we felt, well, look, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, introducing this film jointly uh, with the official selection and Acid, and uh, she will be uh, introduce, introducing its uh, virtual selection of uh, movies that they will uh, introduce. And then three documentary movies, uh, you, we reintroduced uh, documentaries in Cannes a few years back. Uh, many film festivals around the world uh, have been uh, clamoring for this. And uh, uh, we have On the Way to uh, a Million by Duno Adadi. Uh, he's a Congolese uh, filmmaker, documentary filmmaker. And these are images that are rather different from uh, the sort of thing you uh, see uh, in, in, in films. Then uh, Truffle Hunters. Uh, by Miquel Dwerk and Grégory Carcho. This is an American movie, but the story takes place in Italy. Uh, you have Italian, Italian truffle hunters. It's a sort of uh, modern-day padre pa padrone, uh, people who are quite obsessed by what they do. They share out uh, the woods to decide to go to, for the best batch of truffles. And Nine Days in Raqqa, a French documentary based on a book. Uh, it's the story of two women, one who uh, goes to meet 
the one who became Raqqa's mother in Iraq, and, uh, sorry, the mayor of, of Raqqa, the first liberated a city un in Iraq très, très after the war. It's a very impressive movie uh, and uh, about determination. And we can see that feminism, of course, is an everyday struggle. Uh, but there, uh, feminism uh, sort of becomes evidence through uh, political will, the, the determination of that woman who became the mayor of Raqqa in Iraq. So you have lots of documentaries that you can find on TV, but you also have the documentaries in movie theaters. Uh, and uh, then, uh, well, we took a few risks in that uh, uh, selection. We have five comedies uh, that are part of uh, Antoinette in the Seven by Caroline uh, Vignal. It's her second movie, 20 years after her first movie. It's a very uh, pleasant comedy about uh, Jeremy, who uh, on the hard crush decided to... Uh, uh, loved one uh, uh, in uh, up in the mountains, based on a movie by Antoine Decaune. Uh, it's a very funny movie. Then uh, Bruno Podalides is, of course, a, uh, an actor, but he uh, has a movie here in the uh, official selection. He had movies in the other selections uh, uh, in the uh, director's fortnight. But his brother Denny, who's an actor, was in it. Sandrine Kiberlin, I wouldn't like her. It, is the, the boss. I would like to have her as a boss. It's about uh, the world of uh, uh, the, the corporate uh, scene with uh, uh, open spaces and that sort of thing. Um, then we have a feel-good movie with Cat Mirad. Uh, well, it sounds it's like a uh, almost uh, stating the obvious, a comedy, but also a tragedy. Um, Cad, Cad uh, Mira plays a uh, sort of has been uh, actor who goes around the prisons to teach uh, acting and he finds people who have talent and they, they decides to teach them uh, to, uh, Waiting for Godot by, by, by Beckett and so uh, the, the, this uh, uh, movie produced by Robert de Guillon we, we're happy to, to have it um, and we felt well if we were a big theatre we, we could have uh, uh, of course, the response. Le discours uh, by Laurent Tira. Uh, uh, Laurent said, I, I, I never thought I would be selected uh, at Cannes with the Vincent Laverne. Uh, uh, I beg your pardon, Benjamin Laverne. Um, who uh, is, of course, a renowned uh, theatre actor. Uh, this is sort of a one-man show, uh, and um, uh, François Morel is in there as well. And Laurent Lafitte, Laurent Lafitte, who was the MC at the uh, Cannes Festival, has his own movie called uh, The Origin of the World, L'Origine du Monde. Uh, uh, you have Vincent McCain, Karine Viard, Nicole Garcia, uh, playing a crazy psychoanalyst, and Hélène Vincent, who's extremely funny in that movie. Now, this is a very funny movie, but I was very proud because I came out of the film saying, well, that could be a great play, and I was told it was based on a play, so there you have it. So we tend to be pretty much obsessed with the film. In any case, this is a very uh, very uh, beautiful first film by Laurent Lafitte. Then we have four animation movies. I mean, there's documentary, there's comedies, and uh, we have uh, animation films. Annecy Film Festival is an uh, animation festival. I started off with an American film. I would end on that. And in a Japanese movie, uh, Goro Miyazaki. Uh, Ugoho Ayao, uh, I mean, so Ayao's son, uh, Ghibli, it's his first movie for some time. Um, that will have, I mean, it's quite something in Japan to, to have the, I mean, the movie by uh, the, the, the old uh, Ghibli is, is, uh, is ready to go. Uh, and the story takes place in, in, in Britain, so this is really directed to... Uh, at children, but it's a very strange uh, movie. Then Thuy by um, uh, Jonas Paul Rasmussen, a Danish filmmaker. So the great thing about animation films, no two animation movies are alike. And uh, this is a Danish animation movie. It's not like Giuseppe, which was uh, uh, this uh, director's uh, first movie. Um, then you have uh, Aurel, 
That uh, is a French movie taking place uh, during the, uh, the, the, the Spanish Civil War at the border between Spain and France. And finally, I started with uh, Wes Anderson. Uh, it was uh, Fox Search like Disney, and this is also a Disney movie, which goes to show that uh, the Disney studios, I mean, they have shown live action movies, uh, some animation movies have disappeared, but this is Pete. Uh, doctor, the one who did vice versa, he succeeded uh, John Lasseter at Pixar. So that this is a new Pixar movie called Saul on Soul, based on it's about jazz. It's a very beautiful animation uh, movie, and uh, and we're delighted to have them. Uh, I mentioned Wes Anderson. We have François Ozon's movie coming out on the 15th of July. That movie will be out on the 14th of October. So movies will uh, timidly uh, come, be coming out in the theaters. I mentioned America in the U.S. Uh, we're not quite sure the Oscars will take place. Uh, they may be postponed. We don't quite know. Uh, but at least we have a great program for the French César and for the uh, French film industry. Uh, we didn't want to uh, uh, put the French uh, movies uh, to the fore uh, more than America than, than international movies. Uh, but of course, we see the movies here at home, and then we it's a, a little bit every man for himself. But you know, when we fly around the world to Asia, America, and you watch movies on a tiny screen <laughs> on, uh, 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 on a plane seat. I, I, I'm always very touched to see French movies on uh, around the world. Uh, but uh, sometimes you wonder why did they pick uh, this movie or that movie. But sometimes you have surprises, and I certainly hope this selection uh, will be successful as well. Yes, that's something to be excited by. But yes, we also want to support these movies. Dear Pierre, you were saying a minute ago that these movies you see in Cannes for the first time, they usually have a great career, taking them all the way up to the Oscars. We've named a list of movies here, but we really want to support these films, these feature films. Well, yes, we will support them, and of course, uh, this is uh, uh, showcasing them here. Their names are on the map now, as it were, so we will be supporting them also through well, the festival, the website, uh, we have some clout, and then, of course, the movie theaters themselves, uh, UGC, Pate, CGR, uh, and uh, independent uh, uh, film movie theaters, uh, and then festivals, uh, because movies can make it to the Toronto, the New York, New York, Busan, Deauville, Angoulême uh, film festivals. They can go to San Sebastian, not in competition, but they will be shown there. And we've decided that for Toronto and San Sebastian, the movies uh, will be allowed to part, take part in the competitions. In Lyon, of course, the Lumière Festival, there will be a number of uh, of uh, uh, sneak uh, previews. Uh, and then in February, uh, along with you and everybody watching, uh, as I said, uh, we will be showing the movies in the theatres, but uh, we do want to get together in the theatres. And all that in consultation with all the festival presidents. We've been through an unprecedented period for the last two and a half months, and we were very afraid for movies. And oh, most theatres are still closed. Was, were there discussions during lockdown? Down with Venice, Berlin, Toronto? Well, yeah, we're constantly uh, in touch. The only two uh, festivals that were open, uh, the Applebee's Festival and the Berlin Festival, and that and, and it stopped right there. Uh, Vincent Perez has a heritage film festival in Lausanne. He had to cancel on the before it was uh, scheduled to open. Uh, Elaine Stein from Longcarno, from the Carno Festival, uh, she also had to uh, give up. Now, the autumn festivals should uh, run. Of course, we are in touch with everyone. Uh, you, 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 we thought maybe uh, uh, the, the, the other festivals could be working in Venice, hand-in-hand with Cannes. Pierre, what are you going to take away from this year 2020 and this Cannes Film Festival that was not able to take place for the reasons we all know? But what will you take away? The fact that you never gave up. We started the show talking about this. You never thought, no, we're going to do something, we'll fight for that. Yes, because when Thierry told me, well, at the beginning of lockdown, we 
we didn't know. Well, we still felt that maybe, maybe we could organize the festival in May. He told me that the way things are happening with the flow of movies that are coming will be in excess of 2,000 movies. So you can see this life that wants to express itself. And it was so high that one day on the phone, him in the arts and myself in Paris, we thought, well, this, uh, th this rolling festival year round will need to find a way for it to exist. So we thought we could postpone it to early July, but when early July we, we had to give up on that. We thought that anyway we needed to give these movies a boost. That's the resonance of Cannes, this palm door, this great decor here. And just look at the background. That's the background of the Lumière Theatre that you have here on this uh, stage at UGC Normandy. And on top of that, the movies were coming in. So Thierry was telling me how he felt about the films, the discussions he had with Christian Gell and the whole team. So it could not possibly stop. We thought that people were knocking on the door of these closed cinemas. It was going to happen, so we had to give that a boost. That's a very moving and quite spectacular illustration of how strong the Cannes Film Festival is year-round, 365 days a year. So there won't be a, any winners, it's just a selection, but that's the strength of Cannes, showing the movies. Ah yes, well that makes it very democratic, doesn't it? Everybody uh, is on an equal footing. But of course, uh, they said, well, why was this part of the competition, that in un certain regard? Well, this time, everybody will be allowed to give out his or her own Palme d'Or or whatnot, at the end of the year, we'll be able to uh, take stock. I mean, we might have come up with our own choices, but uh, some movies are more... Uh, say suited for the official competition, other for the midnight show or something. But there are 60 million uh, uh, selectors, and uh, so based on that list, uh, everybody will be able to uh, uh, to decide what the official selection could or should have been in the beautiful uh, Palais des Festivals in Cannes. By the way, during uh, the lockdown, the homeless were hosted at the. Uh, 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 the, uh, can uh, festival building. And so can it's not just for the red carpet and glamour. Of course, it's about the film industry, but uh, the city has a life of its own. And the, 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 there was a, a changing of the lines. I was asking Thierry a minute ago, what will you take away from this edition of the festival? Well, uh, I can see that film is alive and kicking. And uh, the weather was great during this edition. That is true. Uh, well, live uh, uh, film was very much alive. Uh, and during the lockdown, people watched movies uh, on TV, uh, some of the, 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 the film heritage, uh, uh, restored versions of old movies. And so if in 30 years' time we want to be able to watch movies, we have to look after uh, film today and the mythology of film. The film narrative is the story of cinema, people going out to theaters and watching movies. And if you want to uh, film to be alive in 30 years' time, we have to work on it now. And usually what's starting when you, we're on stage here and you announce the selection, there's a question coming uh, and saying someone asking, how come there are no Italian movies? So, Thierry, no Italian movies? And there's an almost Italian movie, isn't there? The, the, hunt, the Truffle Hunters. But in any case, Sharon Las Bartas, uh, this uh, Lithuanian filmmaker, is on the selection. And uh, usually that's one country that's left out. Thank you so much, gentlemen, to the both of you. Movies on Canal Plus, it's only starting because here together we've just discovered the official selection of the 73rd edition of the Count Film Festival. In a minute, we'll be with Yves Calvi for the Edition du Frais about movies coming out in uh, theatres from 22 June here in France and the film industry and we'll have you on Le Cercle with Augustin Trapnard. So more and more movies on Canal Plus as ever. See you very soon.